Welcome to Fitz Dog Radio. We're in the uh, the home studio in the we're in the bonus room of the back house. Ceiling fan is on. My next door neighbor is cranking house music today. I I mean I don't really get house music at home, even though it's an oxymoron. House music is at a fucking nightclub. It's when you're on ecstasy and you've got a day glow jumpsuit on. And it's not hanging out on a Saturday afternoon. Who the fuck? Anyway, I love my neighbor, but a little weird. I have to talk to him about that. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, you can see I've got a major zit situation happening between my eyes, which is perfect because my son, my son has a friend who work, who's apparently become like a big shot photographer here in L.A., and he wants to do a series of photographs of comedians. And uh, he's asked me to participate. I'll be the first comedian that he shoots. And probably the last. Especially when I show up with a fucking humongous zit between my eyes. Um, so I, I have good news. I'm back from Gold's Gym. I don't know if I updated everybody, but I talked about it, I think, on Sunday Papers. I had a little incident at Gold's Gym this week with my temper. And I yelled at the general manager. They have these uh, they have these automatic doors that are supposed to open when you put your barcode up on your little uh, key fob. And uh, it never reads it. They, it, it. It felt corporate when they put it up. There was nothing wrong with the old system. It's, it's become corporate. It's become the kind of thing where they're trying to improve something that needed no improvement. And so uh, every time you swipe it, you stand there for like, I'm not kidding you, two or three minutes, swiping, so nothing, nothing. And they don't fix it. It's been going on for fucking months. So I had a really bad day two days ago, and I showed up already angry, already not my best self. And it wasn't, I swiping wasn't opening. And so finally I just jumped over it like it was a New York City subway turnstile. And the general manager yelled at me, And then I yelled at him and we went back and forth and uh, it wasn't pretty. And then I worked out and left. And uh, and so I went back today for the first time and I was really wondering whether or not they had canceled my membership because the the managers kind of like that. I I wouldn't put it past them to do something like that. And so uh, so I went up to the the other guy. There's another guy that works there that I really like. And I think he listens to the podcast. If he does. Hey, what's up, man? So I apologized to him for disrespecting him, but I didn't say anything about the other guy because I would never apologize to the other guy. That's not happening. And then I worked out and then I'm upstairs and like I'm, I'm, I'm standing, I'm sweating my ass off. And this other guy like is walking towards me and I go, man, it's pretty hot to be working out, which I never, ever small talk at Gold Gym because nobody ever fucking smiles. Nobody makes eye contact. The big people seem to fist bump a little bit. Uh, it's cold. It's it's like a lot of bouncers and strippers and people that want to be like them. A uh, lot of lot of bad tattoos. There's a guy that wears a Trump sweatshirt every time, ta- every fucking day. Um, I don't, I have not had a warm experience there in the couple of years that I've been working out there, but you see the results. I mean, look at that. It's fucking crazy. It makes me work hard. And, uh, so anyway, I'm upstairs and I'm standing there and the guy, this guy's walking towards me and I go, yeah, it's pretty hot to work out. And again, never small talk. This is like a big deal. And he goes, you going to move? And I was like, what? And I looked down and I guess there was a mat on the floor that had his stuff on it that I was standing maybe too close to. And I just looked at him like, fuck you. Like, not will you please move or excuse me, you're going to move? Big fucking tough asshole. And I just thought, maybe I'm at the wrong gym. I think I need a kinder, I need a kinder, gentler gym. And uh, so I'm going to look into it. I might start going to Equinox, even though that's kind of douchey, but I don't care. I'm I'm fucking done with golds. Fuck them. Um, Anyway, what else? Here's part of the problem is I don't think I have a warm and inviting face. I think I have resting douche face. Like when I, like I just, I, I so admire people that just have a nice smile on their face all the time. I wish I was Joe Coy. You know, why can't I be Joe Coy or Tom Cruise? 
And instead, I think people pick up bad vibes for me, so I'm overcompensating. I try to smile sometimes, but it looks it looks strained. I look like I look like a guy that just walked into his own surprise party and is not happy that it's happening, and he's fucking fighting the muscles that want to frown are fighting the muscles that have to smile and it's losing and that's what I look like and there's nothing I can do about that life is a much harder place for people like me that don't have resting positive face it's just less doors open less friendships are made less good energy abounds but I don't know what I can do about it I I don't know there's much I can really do about it so anyway um gold's gym um, I was talking last night about, um, home invasions and how so many people have guns and you know what? Those people are fucking pussies. If you got to have a gun in your house, you're scared. I'm not scared of what? A home invasion? How often, how often does a fucking home invasion happen? Are you kidding me? No one's invading your home. If they invade my home, fucking kill me. Just kill me. Before I go get a gun and practice with it and hide it and put it in a safe or whatever the fuck people do. Give me a break. So anyway, I was talking about that. But then I thought if I did die in a home invasion, that might be kind of nice because I don't know what kind of positioning my obituary would get right now. I think I would get mentioned. I don't know what credits they'd have. I haven't really peaked in my career yet. It's been 32 years, but I'm pacing myself. And I think if I got shot in my house, at least then I'd get like some front page coverage. Hopefully nobody else gets shot. I don't want my wife and kids getting shot, but shoot me and get me on that front page. That's the way I want to go out. Shoot me right where this fucking zit is that I'm staring at on this screen right now. You'd really think at the age of 56, acne would go, all right, We've run you through the ringer. We've embarrassed you enough. We kept you from getting laid in high school. We made you look unprofessional in your 20s. How about in my 50s, you just give me a fucking break? How about once my hair falls out, the acne also stops? Can we, can we make that arrangement? Eagle Scouts. That's what I'm talking about. I saw one in the airport. And, you know... They really are uh, overqualified for the job, can we say? They're like 18 years old. They're Boy Scouts, but suddenly they're 18, they got a mustache, but they're still wearing the khaki shorts and the yellow handkerchief. It's like, dude, just join the fucking Marines at this point. If you can can drive to the meetings, to the Boy Scout meetings, you're too old for Boy Scouts. You shouldn't arrive in a fucking car that you're behind the wheel of. Um... And, you know, here's the thing. Our Boy Scouts are sort of like our child army, you know? And I just think how poor we would do fighting against boy armies from other countries, you know, like Somalia or Yemen. Um, These dudes have, these little boys have AK-47s and machetes, and they're killers. Our kids have Swiss Army knives and squirt guns. Look, look, I made a knot. I made a fancy knot. No, did you really? I'm going to knot a tire around you and light it on fire. That's what we do here in Somalia. I was reading about different um, forms of that. Like there's the Colombian necktie. Because you know there's the tire burning thing where they put the tire on you and they light it on fire. Apparently the tie, the rubber burns for a while. Uh, There's also a thing called a Colombian necktie, which is uh, a form of post-mortem mutilation in which the victim's tongue is pulled through a deep cut beneath the jaw and left dangling on the neck. (laughs) Oh, that is creative. It first appeared in Colombia. Colombia was not fucking around in the 80s. When it came to making some money on the Yeho, they they came up with some crazy shit. Another one is a Glasgow smile, which is a wound caused by making a cut from the corners of a victim's mouth, mouth up to the ears, leaving the scar in the shape of a smile. 
The practice is said to have originated in Glasgow. I saw a guy in Ireland who had that Glasgow smile. But he got it, I found out, from his girlfriend, who I had a crush on and actually fooled around with a little bit. She was a bartender in County County Kerry. And uh, he cheated on her, so he was in the pub one night drinking his pint, and she fucking smashed the glass into his face, and it cut up the corners of his mouth. So he had a gla- I'll call it, call it the Kerry smile. Yeah. I made an indigenous totem pole and a golf cart. Yeah, good for you. We're going to send you to... Here's what we're going to do. Send them all to war. Come on. Come on, we're going to a jamboree. We're all going to a jamboree. We're going to get Ukrainian merit badges. We're going to the Ukraine. Come on, kids. All right. Um, let's talk some overheard. It's got some great, uh, got a lot of nice mail lately. I want to thank people. People send nice heartfelt messages and it, it really does mean a lot to me. So, uh, keep them coming and the overheards at fitzdogradio at gmail.com or just go to the website fitzdog.com. You can email me there, but I do appreciate them. Uh, this was from, uh, Connor, Connor Proven. Checking into a hotel in Colorado, the manager, the manager desk guy helping me stops because the other front desk clerk on the phone pulls the phone to his shoulder and says, guy on the phone wants to know if he can check in with a rescued chipmunk. Then he asked, asked, then he asked if I was familiar with chipmunks. Manager, without missing a beat in a low monotone, says, I've seen a few. Then mouths no to the guy while shaking his head left to right along with the glass, glasses downward stare. Um, so this guy rescued a chipmunk. I think you can let a chipmunk in. If you can let a dog, I mean, I assume they got the chipmunk in a cage of some sort, but I love chipmunks. They are like, they are the cutest little motherfuckers. You can't get close to them. They're fast, but I was just hiking in, um, Lake Arrowhead and Lake Arrowhead is filthy with, uh, chipmunks and they make me happy. I think maybe that's my next tattoo. I'm going to get a chipmunk tattoo. Landry said, not really an overheard, but an oversaw. At the grocery store, the people in front of me had the largest box of condoms I've ever seen. Maybe it was like a 64-pack. Damn. And two cases of Gatorade, and that was it. They looked to be in the early 20s. Little greasy in a Dungeons and Dragons kind of way. Not sure what was going on there. Hey, you know what? These, These fucking... Nerds, the new nerds are fucking. They go to these furry conventions and they apparently it is just a sex fest. And so, uh, you know, you need a little Gatorade. If you're going to have sex 64 times, you need some electrolytes going through your system. So good for them for thinking, thinking ahead. This is from Dylan Caldwell. Greg, I was picking up some fried chicken outside of my car. I hear a couple screaming. A man is walking outside of a car that's following him. A woman who's driving is screaming, get your ass back in the car. The guy walking beside says, I'm telling you, if I get inside the car, I'm going to put my hands on you. The woman screams back, I don't care. Wow. Yeah. That's love. To her, love is getting a little bit beat up. And isn't that sad? Isn't that horrible? Love to me is being ridiculed. My family was just out here just shitting all over me. Everything I do, everything I stand for, they mock. And I love it. And it, and it comes from a place of love. But not hitting. Come on. Come on, people. And now a word from our sponsor, Better Help. As you people know, I need help. We all need help. I, like many of you, have thoughts that get stuck in your head, problems, no solutions, just problems, and they circle around and they race. You have racing thoughts coming around the outside. It's never going to work again. Never going to work again. Neck and neck with mom didn't call back. 
But now, making a move on the outside in third place is should have bought Bitcoin. Uh, should have bought Bitcoin now, holding steady in the middle of the pack. But coming up behind him is everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right is now, oh, he tripped and fell and is choking on his own vomit. The other horses are kicking him in the head. And now coming across the finish line, paying 10 to 1, am I gay? Hey, now. Uh, so, yeah, if you got those thoughts going, I use cognitive behavioral therapy with the therapist that I've been seeing since the beginning of the pandemic. I've had amazing results. I love doing it over uh, online. We see each other. Um, we have a great relationship and I get a lot out of it. I mean, whether you got, if you have stress, maybe you need some emotional healing. You've got anxiety, depression. You can, you, you can get benefits from, from this like you can't imagine. You deserve it. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. There's no harm, no foul. Um, when you want to be, when you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Fitzdog to get 10% off your first month. That's better H E L P.com slash Fitzdog. There we go. Okay. Another way to feel good is to come see some live comedy. I'll be in Lowell, Arkansas this weekend, September 16th and 17th at The Grove, New Orleans, October 6th at Howlin' Wolf, Lafayette, Louisiana the next night, Chicago at the Den Theater on October 15th, Tampa, Florida, Fort Worth, San Francisco, all coming up. Go to FitzDog.com for tickets. Uh, my guest now, I had a great, holy shit, what a great guest. Uh, I was so excited. I've always been a fan of his. Ricky Smiley is on the show today. He has a show called the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, which is broadcast in over 60 markets in the country. He just won a big award. Uh, he's in Nick Cannon's new film. He is, uh, he's done it all. He's a co-host on Dish Nation, uh, been on Showtime with the Apollo, Def Comedy Jam, Uptown Comedy Club. He's done it all. Uh, you're going to love him. Here he is, my friend, Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley's on the show right now. He's got a beautiful portrait over his shoulder. Uh, who's that? That's my grandma. Yeah. Both. Oh, both yeah. your grandmas. Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you feel like uh, the women are the backbone of the family or the man is the backbone of the family? Well, my granddad was the backbone. But my grandfather's was the backbone. But, man, I had some awesome grandmothers that was um, hilarious, uh, uh, with a real sense of humor. They were kind. Uh, taught me uh, manners and respect, how to cook. Right. That's why, that's why I still have some of these kick butt recipes to this day. Because I know. I see a lot of you online making, uh, make, you're into beans. You're, you're a bean man. Oh, yeah, man. I, you know, you know when the weather starts to cool off a little bit when it's not too hot, man. You can, I did like this big pot of, uh, I did these pinto beans with the sausage and the smoked turkey yeah. and different, like, it, it was so delicious. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's good down home Southern cooking. So your grandmothers, were they, um, did they get along? Cause sometimes they get territorial with the kids and now, the grandkids. They actually, they were best friends. They lived across the street from no each other. Kidding. That's how my parents, that's how my parents met because both of my grandmas lived across the street from each other. How about that? No kidding. How, how about I was spoiled rotten? <laughs> And what yeah. what was a typical night for the two of them? Sitting on the front porch, drinking a little wine or what? Uh, drinking a little wine or a little, I think they used to drink a little bit of um, uh, Tennessee Tennessee whiskey. My, uh -huh. my granddad would make drinks yeah. uh, on, on the weekend. So uh, somebody was always barbecuing. We were right. out in the front yard playing, having a good time, uh, listening to Between B.B. King uh, uh, a little bit of Bobby Blue Bland, Bobby Blue Bland, and and a little playing cards and a little cussing. And did they yell at you when you cussed? 
Your grandmother? No, no, no. I didn't curse. They cussed. Oh, they cussed. Really? Oh yeah. What was what was life like for them in Alabama? And this is this had been going back to the seventies. Were they working? What, what what was their life like? Yeah, uh, my grandma worked at the airport. Uh huh. My granddad worked at a steel plant, and they were hard working middle class church going folks, and uh, they they was just awesome and and made life really really simple. Uh, even though you, you we didn't have much, they made you feel like you was rich. Right, right. Yeah. Wow, man, look at you coming from a nice family. You can tell. You can tell. You're just a very because I see you. Uh, you have a lot of love for your kids and your grandkids. Now you're a grandpa. Oh yeah, yeah. I have I have a six year old um, grandson and a three year old granddaughter. And you got that pool out back, and they all play in it. Yes, sir. I uh, got my six-year-old swimming in the deep end and got my granddaughter with a little floaties. Yeah. Uh, jumping off the diving board and, and scooting around the entire pool. So uh, I, I'm definitely pro learn how to swim immediately. <laughs> Dude, I got to tell you the funny story about floaties. I was at the beach two days ago with my wife and some friends. And, yeah. uh, and all of a sudden we looked down at the water and it was a rough day at the beach. You know, this is mm -hmm. not, the, the, this is the, you know, Pacific ocean. Right. And this little kid is down there and he's got floaties on right. and no parents anywhere around. This kid looks like he's about maybe three years old and he starts, right. walk, he starts walking in the water. And I mean, this is the kind of water that, you know, once you lose your footing, it will suck you right out. And so yeah. me and my wife go running down. We're like, where the fuck are they? And my, my, my wife runs up to him and she grabs his arm and she goes, where's your parents? And he looks at her and, they, and he goes, they're right up there on the pink belt. It turns out he was a little person. <laughs> Bro, I would have passed out. I would have made a snow angel in the sand. I would have been laughing so hard. They would have had to come. They would. They would have had to call the paramedics, bro. Let me tell you something. That's funny. And then he walked. Want... He walked back to the blanket where his mother was, because he was probably like he was like a teenager. And he walked back to where his mother was. And then we sat down. And then we saw him go back down to the water. Another guy got up and ran down to the water. This motherfucker couldn't get in the water. Nobody would let him in the water. Listen, listen, I, I went out on a date with a little person, chick, right? But on Facebook, she never showed the rest of her body. Really? And, uh, we, yeah, we went to Applebee's, and uh, the lady came over and bought crayons and a coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you did the coloring. I hope you just went with it. You got to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. We just said thank you and played it off. And uh, we did the little maze. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cool. It was, it was awkward, but, you know, I'm a comic. I knew how to play it off. Yeah, that's great. Did you close the deal or did it end at Applebee's? Yeah, it kind of ended at Applebee's. I knew that she wasn't the one for me when I had to pick her up and put her on the floor after, we, after our meal. <laughs> <laughs> You know, taking her home or whatever. You know, she had gotten yeah. Uber and she had left the baby car seat right there at the uh, concierge. <laughs> so uh, I ended up putting the baby car seat in the back and I took her home. But we had a great conversation. <laughs> you had a short conversation. Just <laughs> a really, really, really short uh, uh, conversation. Uh, you know, it, it just, you know, and, uh, but I did have a friend. Uh, there was a little person that passed away and um, at, at the funeral, when they opened up the coffin, nothing was there. I was like, what the hell is going on? Come to find out when they took the casket up the steps into the main sanctuary, apparently he had slid to the bottom part of the. No. The He'll get emotional. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's tough to balance. It's it's tough to balance a little person in the casket. 
You know, if they would just put an old Amazon box at the bottom. That probably yeah. would not have yeah. happened. But yeah, you got to prop them up. You got to prop or some, them up. Or some Velcro on the back. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so I've been listening to your prank calls, man, you're a funny bastard. You, I mean, did you ever do that show prank, uh, crank yankers? No, I never did the show, uh, crank yankers, man. I was just, um, I used to be on, I used to be on the buck wild morning show. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And I had these, um, that was that down in Alabama. Yeah, down in Birmingham, Alabama. WBHJ, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, 95.7 Jams. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would do these prank phone calls, and I had to, you know, uh, it was like, hey, you got these characters, let's do these prank phone calls. I was like, okay. The prank phone calls was a hit on the morning show, and uh, we ended up putting the prank phone calls on CD. so when I would perform, I would sell the CDs. Uh, after the show and the prank phone calls just kind of kind of blew up. So when I would do radio interviews, I would play the prank phone calls and people would laugh. So people would be encouraged to come out to my comedy show. Let me ask you this. Are you still selling CDs after your shows? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was doing it up until about two years ago. And then I, I finally started saying, I'll be selling my DVDs after the show. I'll also be selling DVD players. Right. <laughs> because uh, uh, everything oh, yeah. is online. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. You got to get people to follow you on social media to get your stuff now. It's crazy. So do you sell anything after shows now? I know you got a big tour coming up. Nah, I just go home. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, you know, it's a lot of wear and tear on your vocals. Yeah. You're already done the show. You've been doing radio shows. And, you know, a little older now, 54. So after you perform, you just kind of just just go home. Yeah. <laughs> Once you have a pool, you don't sell shit after the show. That's the rule. That's the cutoff point. Right. Right, man. It's like your nerves not what they used to be because you take a picture. Yeah. And then the lady don't like her picture. Then you have to take three pictures with her. You, you got those divas. Yeah. And they get really entitled. So, you know, the meet and greets don't work out for me because I'm a man of structure and boundaries. Yeah, the boundaries are tough at the meet and greets. And plus, like you're trying to sell your merch and that person that takes three, four photos, now like 50 people have walked by that you didn't sell anything to to get this one yeah. photo. Yeah. Yeah, self yeah, selfish, hold up the line, want to stand there and have a conversation. And you got to keep it moving because you got to be out the venue at a certain time. Some people don't care because it's all about them. Right, so right. I just say good night. I shake hands uh, as I exit the stage. And yeah. that's, that's it. it. Peace yeah. out. You got to do like what Earthquake does. He has a photographer standing there and they shoot the photo. Photo gets printed. They stick it in a little like cardboard frame and they sell it to you for 20 bucks. And I mean, what is it? What's that cost? A nickel? And he's selling yeah. them for 20 bucks. And he is, he's got a line of people waiting to pick those babies up on the way out. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's like you have to really control it because everybody have a cell phone now, right? Right. And you have to control it. Like, but uh, it, it, I could do it because I'm, I'm I'm a radio personality, but at the same time, you almost can't do it because these are your listeners. You know, uh, I, it, it just gets to be too much. So I'm like, I'm cool. I'll I'll do a meet and greet with the radio station backstage. Yeah. So, but they have to win the tickets through the radio station. So that can be fun. That's a little bit more control uh, or whatever. I'll go in. The, uh, they'll decorate one of the empty dressing rooms and I'll walk in, say hello to everybody, take a picture with their phone and jump in the car and disappear until the tail lights get real yeah, small. Yeah, right, right, right. Fade to <laughs> black. So are you married? You got a girl? No, nah, man, single as can be. So yeah, I've been, uh, I, used to, I was married for 12 years, divorced probably about 20 years. Uh, single, kids are grown. I have two seniors in college. My daughter's at Baylor University. My son at Alabama State University. Both about to graduate. Done. Is that your alma mater, Alabama State? 
that's my alma mater. My son is there now. He's a senior. And um, so I, I put my kids through college and hey, I'm done. Yeah, I got a senior in college myself. Yeah. Yeah. Where? My, my son's at DePaul in Chicago. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then my daughter is, she'll be a sophomore this year. She's taking a semester off, but she's, uh, she wants to do tr- early childhood education, teach kids. Right. And then my son is a, uh, my son is majoring in anthropology, which is the study of how to live off your father for the rest of your life. Right. And not a lot of money in anthropology. Right. Right. What are your, yeah, what are your kids made? Did you try to guide your kids to their majors or are they kind of do their own thing? No, nah, my, my, my son wants to go to law school. Uh, after graduation, my daughter uh, wants to be a speech. Is it pathologist? Pathologist. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, my oldest daughter graduated communications from Tennessee state university. Wow. The same Oprah graduated from. So. And what does she uh, want to do with the communications major? That's kind of a broad one. I, yeah. Uh, you know, I told her to, you know, start watching channels, you know, ESPN, but she has an opportunity at Tyler Perry studios that I think she's got to take up in Atlanta. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. I'm not sure if I want her to, you know, to, to live in Atlanta because Atlanta is, is busy, busy. Yeah, it is. It is. I know. Well, I, it's, it's, it's also a beautiful city. I got a, I got a soft spot in my heart for Atlanta. I, I've been there yeah. a lot. I think it's a vibrant city. I think it's very diverse. I think it's got uh, a lot of culture and yeah, all the concerts come through there. I mean, it, it's a good place to live, but um, did you hook the Tyler Perry uh, opportunity up? Well, actually, uh, she got that gig because the, one of the ladies that was producing um, our reality show, which we did six seasons of, was so crazy about her. And now she works for Tyler Perry Studio. Okay. So she kind of, you know, working it, uh, kind of got it through, through. That's how she got connected. Now, is this the daughter that uh, I was so sorry to read about this that got shot in a? In a... No, she's the one at Baylor. Oh, uh, okay. And how is she yeah. doing? Is she how did how is she how does she process that uh, that that trauma? Man, uh, therapy every week for it's been over a year now. Uh, yeah. Therapy, weekly therapy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the beginning, twice a week. Uh huh. Wow. But she's doing she's doing good. Just it's just, you know, when you start getting stuff like the fourth of July. Right. New Year's, uh, it's it's a trigger for her. Right. I'm sure. Yeah, that's yeah. rough. Oh man, my heart went out to you when I read about that because she was nineteen when it happened and my daughter's nineteen yeah. right now. I can't at such a at such a tough age. Listen, you know? man, 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 that was so crazy because I got that text message when I was on the air. Um, my daughter's mom was like, Aaron, Aaron was shot. I'm like, what? Yeah. What, 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 what do you mean? My daughter was, what, what do you mean? She was shot. She's, um, at the hospital, but she was shot. And that was during COVID, right? Right. So I had to fly from Birmingham to DFW airport, leave DFW airport, drive to Dallas Lovefield airport to jump on Southwest airline to fly to Houston only to get there and uh, only to get there and couldn't get in the hospital. Couldn't get in the right. hospital. To sit outside. Whoa. It was, it, it, was inc- it was insane. I could, I could write a whole book about it. Dude, that's heart wrenching. That is, that is really tough. And, and you're, you're, so you're standing outside the house. What do you, what do you just, just. I had to wait. She was, uh, she was changing, uh, changing hospitals. Yeah. And, and so, uh, when, when, she, when I realized she was changing, changing hospitals, that was the only chance we had. A op- that was the only opportunity we had to see her. Right. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. thank God she's okay. And, uh, yeah. and, and you, you want to hear something really morbid and, and crazy Yeah. about that. So when she got out the hospital, uh, people had sent, flowers and stuff all over the country, right? And it was like a repass because you're there with flowers and food that people had sent. The only difference was your daughter was there. But families from 
both sides were there. And it was the only, it, it, she was just there. Right. And um, I was, I was doing a radio break one day and uh, I was, I, I had just played 50 Cent in the club. Everybody knows that song. Yeah. Uh, 15 after the hour, Ricky Smile in the morning show. And this was like two weeks later. I'm, I'm at the radio station. I'm at work. Like somebody came and whispered in my ear, someone shot your daughter and I lost it. I had to leave the radio station. Yeah. 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 But yeah I don't know why it took two weeks for me to process and, and for it to hit me, but that, that, that was something. Right. So you kind of shut down when it initially happened. You went into a state of shock. You got into father mode, get yep. there, get there however you can. But then yep. you didn't, you didn't get a chance to feel the feelings right away. Right. 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 So just that, that's just to show you how the mind works. Yeah. Or, or whatever. Yeah. So, um, you did know, they, I, did they catch the guy that shot him? Nah, but you know what I told my daughter? I said, those guys, if they live in that kind of lifestyle, it's probably either dead or in jail. Right, right. Because some guy at the hospital was shot and he raises it. She was on the other side of the nurse's counter. And some guy raised his head up and looked at her and was like, hey, those bullets went for you and said something. And she was like, what? What? It was just, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. She, she, the way she explained it, it was just, um, and she was crying like, 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 what do you mean? You know, like, so, you know, just what I told her, I said, guys, the people that live a lifestyle like that, yeah, because when you put something in the universe or whatever, you, you get it back because I'm, I'm a gunshot victim. Are you really? I am. Uh, in Birmingham also? In Birmingham, but but her she was shot in Houston. Oh, Texas. She was in Houston, right, right, right. Yeah, but but yeah, I got shot. Uh, back then, somebody hit me on the sky pager, so I go to the payphone. Some guys came out to rob the the gentleman at the payphone next to me, and shot me to let that guy know that they were serious about the rob. No shit, bro. Uh, I got shot. The day they found Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, I got shot that night. Did you so, think it was? Uh, did you think it was OJ? <laughs> but I tell you what happened. I tell you what happened. I'm in ICU, and I hear beep, 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 and I'm talking about I got all these tubes or whatever, right? I look over at the TV and police officers chasing a white Bronco. That's what I remember in the ICU. Yeah, right. I'm, what the? <laughs> yeah. That's, that, so that was, what was that, 95? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And all you're thinking is, all right, bad news is I got shot. Good news is I'm about to get my name in the paper. I'm about to get on the news. Not with I the was. white Bronco. Not with a white Bronco driving around. You're not getting the news. <laughs> right. Bro. <laughs> and the guy, the guy that shot me did 25 years. No got shit. out. Got out of prison. I had to go to the parole hearing. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't parole him because he was in solitary confinement. So so he eventually got out. Got out, somebody hit me up on Facebook, on Messenger, was like, hey, you know, Jeremy Anderson is out of prison. Uh, I'm like, oh, wow. He said, just just want to let you know, somebody that knew both of us. And he got killed. No. Yeah, the dude got killed. Um, he got killed three months out of prison. No shit. Drag, drag racing his, his sister's car. And coincidence, this was a pure coincidence. So the same guy hit me up on Messenger on Facebook, say, hey, uh, Jeremy funeral is going to be at such and such funeral home on First Avenue, which is on First Avenue, which is like the main street through Birmingham. It goes from one end to the other end of Birmingham. Right. Everybody knows First Avenue. Coincidentally, I passed my funeral recession and I put two and two together and I was at a stoplight and I watched this hearse and the cars go by and that was more morbid than the night he shot me. 
Wow, that's heavy. It is. Damn. I talk about that in my book, uh, you can order order my book on Amazon. Uh, uh, it's, it's it's really a good book. Um, uh, I, I I break it down. You should have tried to drag race the hearse. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> hey, hey, you know I'm not sensitive. I'm a comic. I can take it. I love it. Yeah, that was. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, right. now, let me ask you this. People go through stuff like that, and you're asked to forgive. Because I know you're a Christian man. You're asked to forgive. Did yeah. you did you have forgiveness for that man in your heart? Oh, yeah. Yeah, what I but what I didn't forget, I forgive forgave him for shot me, but the the other lives he affected, I I wasn't so right forgiven because the dude, uh, from what I understand, the dude had bodies. Oh, really? Right? Yeah, dude, dude, and I'm not talking about how many chicks he slept with. Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking. About he he had, he had dead bodies. Yeah, right. I had bodies that were left for dead because I, I when I smashed, I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Honey. You hit nine one one on the way on the way out the door. You may want to check right. fifty two Melvin <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> I think she's breathing, but I'm not sure. Right, right. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, man. Um, you know, I, I I had um after that incident, my career took off. I went to that parole hearing with the attitude like I'm good. Let him out. As long as he don't bother me, yeah. I'm sure he's uh, but apparently something was wrong with him because he got right out and put himself in a situation to die, and he's dead. Yeah, like yeah, he's he's still dead. <laughs> he's still dead now. Still dead. <laughs> you Google once in a while just to just to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. Dead. Yeah. Just uh, if I see a picture pop up on Facebook with him at the club talking about. Yeah. It's going to freak me. <laughs> yeah, that is weird when you when you find cuz I've known people like that too that they go to jail, they get a break, they get out, they get right back in jail again and you wonder about that fire, that fire that's burning inside of some people that they just can't control. They can't control their impulses, you know? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm, I, that's why I'm glad I had good grandparents. I had some good get your ass somewhere and sit down grandparents. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, 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 so my grandparents' discipline and structure was good for me and me and my ADHD. Oh, I yeah yeah we do yeah. I'm on the I'm on the Ritalin right now. Ten milligrams, baby. Yes, sir, let's go. Yeah. And I take it, I, I don't take it on the weekends. I only take it during the week. And then, and then it'll be like, it'll be like one o'clock on a Saturday and I'm in my underwear watching cartoons. And my daughter's like, dad, are you okay? And I'm like, dad's fine. He's just not on Adderall today. This right. is the other version. <laughs> yeah. I, I take an Adderall and remember my lines. If I get a script and have to shoot something, yeah. that Adderall get all the way together. I'm like on point, bam, yep. bam, bam. Yeah, I wish I'd had that as a kid, man. I, I had I had the worst grade. I, I, the, the worst part was I knew I was smart when I was young, but then I'd yeah. go to school and I'd get shitty grades because I would space out during the first part of the lesson. And then, of course, the second half, you start tuning in, but it's too late. If you didn't hear the first part, the second part doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, so I always got shitty grades. I started to feel like I was stupid. And that's the thing about... I think a lot of stand-up comics have ADHD because we found something where the adrenaline of being on stage jacks you up the way Adderall does. And all of a sudden your synapses are popping, you're connected to your brain and you're in the moment and you can be creative. Yep. And we found that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's definitely true. It really helped me, helped me out a lot. Had I had it, I probably would have made better grades. Yeah. But I, I was, I was one one C away from making an A B honor roll. Uh, I never made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one C away. I could not. I could not get mad. So. Do your kids have ADHD? Uh my oldest son. 
son has it, but but none of the other kids. They didn't they didn't pick it up. Yeah, my daughter got it. My daughter got it from me. But but you know because we recognized it early and she got medicated early, she's dealing with it and she's doing and she's doing fine with it. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't. You know, I can't. I'm I'm not good in math, so. In order to graduate, I had to get in get into a, a special ed, special education math. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it all worked out. It's all worked out. Yeah. You got you got a radio show you're on in sixty markets yeah. across the country. You're making uh, you got to be making well, we, making upwards of like uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out what you make in a year. Um, we close to a hundred markets now. It's really growing. Hundred markets. Yeah, since Tom Joyner retired. Uh, Damn. Uh, yeah, we're getting close to 100, like, for real. And uh, I've been doing radio, like, 16 years now. That's amazing. You yeah. know, that's, a, that's what my father did for a living. I grew up the son of a, of a radio guy. Awesome. And, yeah, uh, in New York City. And then uh, I've been doing radio for about 15 years. And now my son, in college, he's got his own radio show. That's freaking awesome. It's great. So when Ain't you nothing like good radio. When you but but you what time do you have to get up in the morning? I naturally get up at uh three thirty, four o'clock AM. Oh, so you're not a drinker or a party or anything? Never had a drink in my life. Get don't out party. of here. No. Whoa. I don't judge people that, that do, you know, I just I just you know, uh like I'm I'm cool. I got a natural high. Damn, that's amazing. And you don't smoke weed? Nah, I never smoked any weed. Whoa. Yeah, I got a contact before. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, but uh, but nah, I, I just focus, man. That discipline, that structure is real. What made you never take a drink? You know, my dad died you know, from uh, drugs and stuff and uh, watching what my parents went through because they was flower children growing up in the 60s and 70s. And, uh, you know, my you know my dad died and seeing some of the things I saw, I'm like, I'm, I'm cool on that. I, I don't have to have that. Yeah, I haven't I, had it. I haven't had a drink in about 30 years. And that's because my, my dad died at 52 from drinking. So, yeah, yeah, you see you see that and you just go like, well, I know how that ends. Yeah. And I yeah. know and I know what the life is like. I know that my my father's life could have been a lot more. I mean, he had so much. He had a beautiful family, he had a good job, and yeah. it was just the drink the drinking just kept him from being a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm 54, man, and and my dad was when he died, he was 26. Damn. Yeah, so so I I you know, uh but, but God is good because <clears throat> my grandfather my grandfather stepped up and uncles, I have my dad had three brothers. My mother had four brothers. Wow! So all of the men stepped up and that's uh, and and raised me. And uh, I have a thirty two year old son. You know what I mean? My yeah. my son outlived the age of my dad. So yeah, uh, um, uh, that's a weird moment, isn't it? The 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 yeah. year the year that you outlive your dad is existential. Yeah. It's it's heavy. Yeah. 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 So, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, enjoying life now because, you know, you don't, things don't really come together till you turn 50. When you turn 50, that's yeah. when you really get in mode and you start to relax. But I'm just glad that I can still, you know, do stuff like I like, I like to swim. I swim a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, um, you know, I'm a boater. I love being on the water uh -huh. and, and just enjoying myself and relaxing. And I don't perform every week. I don't perform at all in the summer. Yeah. I only yeah, me too. I don't go out in the summer. Yeah, September and May. That's it. Yep. And the, so what's a family get together like when you've got so many uncles and you must have a million cousins? Like, who do you invite? Do, do people's feelings get hurt if everybody's not invited to a barbecue? Uh, not all of them, because I don't like all my relatives. And uh -huh. I, don't call them, I call them relatives. Yeah. And, and family is, is relatives that you love and like to be around mixed with friends that you consider family. Family. Yeah. I call them family. Fram yeah. 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 But it's a lot of them that's blood related to me. They'll never step foot in my house. Yeah. Right. And I, and I resent, I resent a lot of them and I mean it. Yeah. 
Well, then you got boundaries, man. You got boundaries. Entitlement. You know, when you are a radio a public figure or whatever, you know, you get talked about, dogged about, dogged out, judged, all this kind of stuff. Everybody have these things to say about you because they don't respect boundaries. Yeah. And they, um, you know, don't respect the word no. But uh, I wouldn't give a damn if I never saw some of them another day of my life. And I mean it. So you won't go to the funeral? If they, I, I'll go to the beach first. If I have a choice between their funeral and the beach, yeah, I'm going to get me a, I'm going to Mickey D's, get a number three with cheese, no onions, and to the beach I go. To hell with them. <laughs> I mean, they went shit in your life when they was living. What the fuck are you going yeah. wasting a whole day? You know, black funerals two and three hours. Yeah, yeah. Over a over a piece of trash that mistreated you when they were living. To hell with them. Yeah. Yeah, those are tough. Those are tough. Um, it, you know, a funeral is a thing where you want to you want to be able to show up and have love in your heart. And if it's not there, don't don't be at the funeral. It doesn't make yeah, sense. Just, I, I got I got relatives that if they die and I don't want them at my I have a seating chart already written out for my for my funeral. No you're shit. Gonna have, you're not going to have your ass on the front row and have people accompanying you and you treated me like shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, as a matter of fact, I have a balcony or you can wait outside. I got friends and and different people I met over the years uh, uh, who I have a bond with. Those are the people that will ride in the limos and, yeah. and be comforted. And send it. There are some blood relatives that I wish not come. Yeah. And I, and I mean it. So... Here's the thing. I had this idea a while ago, and I think I, I think it's a great idea. You plan your own funeral. Like you said, here's the invite list. Here's the seating chart. Here's the soundtrack, the playlist. Here's who I want to give my eulogy. Here's some stories that I want them to tell. I don't want them to forget that story about the time we went fishing and this happened. Um, here's how I want my money, my, you know, my will, what charity, like, I want to have a website that you sign up for and it costs you like 10 bucks a year, but you can go on it regularly and update everything about how you want your funeral to be pictures. You upload the pictures you want shown on the slideshow at your, because yeah. your loved ones, when you die, your loved ones, they want to grieve. They don't want to be going through your fucking hard drive and finding porn mixed in with the family photos. They don't, you don't need to them going through that yeah, shit. Yeah, it's not good. You see a big ass go across the screen <laughs> while your casket is laying there in front of the the pulpit. It's like an eclipse. <laughs> like your casket is there all of a sudden a big ass. Right, right. <laughs> it's got a tattoo of a rose with a dagger in it. Oh, that's a sad girl. That's a girl that had a Yeah, hard time. man. <laughs> Come on. That's funny. Yeah. So I don't, I, I think I want to do that as a business. Yeah. I'm looking for some side hustles. I'm 56 years old. You and, don't look it. Well, thanks, man. I, uh, what I try to do is I go in the sun a lot and I try to keep my uh, wrinkles nice and deep. That's my secret. Right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Um, so let me, let me talk to you a little bit about this tour you got coming up. Uh, you got, I got some of the dates written down. You're going to be coming to uh, karaoke night in Birmingham. What the hell's that? You do a karaoke night? Oh man, it's always sold out. It seats 530 people. Everybody loves karaoke. Like, like I, I turn karaoke into it, uh, an event. Uh, so that, that always sells out. That's in Birmingham, Alabama. What's your show. song? What, what, what's your karaoke song? What do you lead with? I really don't sing. I just come out there and make fun of the people that can't sing. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Oh, I'm, so I'm they, the so they sing and you stay on stage and roast No, them? I walk around the audience uh -huh. giving commentary and, yeah. and, and just have fun with it. Right. I like it. <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to Coral, Coral Springs, September 16th. Lafayette. Yes. September 17th, Fort yep. Wayne, September 23rd, Indianapolis, yep. September 24th, Columbus, September 30th, Detroit, October 1st, Cleveland, October 2nd. Oh, October 14th, you're in Chicago. I'm in, I'm in Chicago, October 15th. So maybe oh, yeah. Where? Uh, the Den Theater. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
So yeah. maybe if I'm in town tonight early, I'll come out and check out your show. Yeah, I'm at the, uh, the I think the Airy Crown. Okay. Yeah, that's what, yeah, Chicago is always fun. Are you kidding me, man? Chicago is, you can, if you can't have a good time in Chicago, don't leave home. Go to Giordano's, get your pizza. Yeah. You got to get there yeah. an hour early. It takes them an hour right. to make it. Yeah. Get you some Garrett's popcorn on the way out. Yep. And hit the Nike store on Michigan Avenue. <laughs> and, and you know what? And check out the art. The Art Institute is my favorite museum in the oh, country. Oh, yeah. Out there on the, uh, is that near the pier? Oh, I know the art. Uh, yes, I know exactly. Yeah, it's right on the water. It's right on the water. Right. Right. Down the street from the stadium. Yep. Exactly. And it's got. And go, and go to the Navy Pier. Yeah, the Navy Pier is awesome in the summer. And then they got they got that reflect, that big silver reflecting thing that you walk underneath. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Ain't nothing like the shine. Yeah. So um, let's also talk about congratulations. You won your second National Association of Broadcasters Marconi Award for Network yeah. Syndicated Person of the Year. What what was there a ceremony? Oh, uh, COVID killed that one. But uh, I, I yeah. Yeah, but I did receive uh, went, my first one. Um, I uh, went to the ceremony. It was it was pretty cool to receive that award. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the lady that presented the award was the president, the CEO of uh, Cox Radio. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm on some Cox stations. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was cool. That was a lot of fun. I, uh, I was really grateful for that. Yeah, so your syndicate, it's so hard to figure out syndicated radio because when my dad did it, there was no syndication. The, the, yeah. I think the, fir the first person to really get syndicated might have been Rush Limbaugh. And that was right. back then. That was in like the late 70s, early. Uh, that was probably mid to late 80s. And, right. uh, and now you're syndicated by a, a few different. So you're, are you on Radio One as well? Yeah, Radio One. Uh, Summit, Cumulus, uh, Cox, um, uh, Perry Broadcasting Network. Um, is that Tyler Perry? Nah, uh, uh, it's a man named Mr. Perry uh, that lives in Oklahoma City. He owns a bank. Okay. Uh, uh, he's one of my mentors. I love Mr. Perry. Really, really, really kind man. Uh, I'm on some um, let's see what other stations. I'm on some iHeart stations as well. So, I mean, that's crazy. Who do you have to meet all these people? Are you constantly having like Zoom calls with this syndicated network and that one, or do you? Or is your agent nah. deal with all that? No, nah, no, nah. we we don't have to do all of that. Um, I just kind of connect with them when I come to their city to perform. Yeah. So the program director, the GM, some sales reps, some listeners. Yeah. Get them backstage, meet and greet, say hello to everybody. And I do all the liners. I get up 30 minutes early and go in there and do imaging. Okay. Or sometimes after the show, make sure everybody have what they need for their big events. Yeah. Uh, you know, and just, I, I, I have really, when radio used to be like this, I have really streamlined and made it simple. I'll tell you what, when people get super successful as you are, uh, other people stand around and they go, man, how'd he get that? He got lucky. <laughs> yeah. He got lucky. It's like, no, hey, that's not they, luck. Oh, that's, they, that's a, they, you, you my, are, first, my first job, I drove 60 miles one way every single morning just that, for the opportunity to be on the radio. Right, right. 60 miles. Yeah. And probably and, not a great and, car. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I had an old 300 ZX, and uh, I thought falling with the T-top, and uh, I would I would have to be there an hour early for show prep, and then after the morning show, we would have an air check session. Oh man! Yeah, so I kind of I kind of went in on my radio show this morning when somebody was was kind of nagging about stuff, and I'm talking about like, you know, my my thing like making personal sacrifices just to be able to have what you have. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, it's hard to make that up. You either have that in you or you don't that kind of drive. And I'm sure you had that drive with your stand-up comedy as well. You know, it's same thing. You probably drove 
a lot further than 60 miles to do gigs for 50 bucks just to get I the see. stage time. You know, it's uh, it, you can't make that up. And, and it's, and it's something when you have children, you, you look at them and you say, are you going to have that? And I had a talk with my son about it yesterday. He was talking yeah. about how our generation is making it harder for his generation because I go, I go, no, I go, your generation doesn't hustle. Your generation is you're waiting to be handed stuff and you don't want right. to work. You don't want to sacrifice. And I yeah. kind of hurt his feelings. I, I texted him later and I said, Hey, I, I, I sent him a text. I said, Hey, sorry. I was being kind of cunty before I was in a bad mood, but nah, uh, you know, I, I, I don't apologize for, for honesty or whatever. Toughen up. Yeah. You know, my, my son, my son has a, a, a rough basketball coach. I said, well, how do you feel when the coach curse you out? My son's like, it don't bother me. I'm used to it. And yeah. that's the type. Yeah, man. I, you know, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't call your name. I was just being totally honest with you about whatever it is. And sometimes it, it, it's just going to sting. And sometimes they have to feel it a little bit in right. order to, stop. but, right. uh, but I, you know, my radio show, and I think a lot of radio personalities have become lazy, entitled, don't want to work, don't want to have air check sessions, don't want to participate in morning show boot camp. Because the thing about it is, if I'm going to do radio, I'm going to do it well or not do it at all. Right, right. You know, same thing, same thing with stand up, you know, stand up comedy, you know, getting booed off the Apollo, deaf comedy jam, and driving all over the country. Uh, with my Elton John Yellow Brick Road cassette tape, and I'm talking about when I when I when I tell you I know every note from uh, a funeral for funeral a friend. for a friend. It's my it's my favorite Elton John song. Man, I, I, I oh my god! And when I tell you I, every time Elton John comes to Birmingham for a concert, I'm there. Yeah, but I, I love oh my god Yellow Brick Road, and, and you know playing R and B and hip hop. I get off the air. I'm listening to Fleetwood Mac. That's it's hilarious. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. We may never pass this, this way, way again. Oh, come on now. Yeah, yeah. When I when I tell you I love Jerry Rafferty, oh, I am a, Baker when, Street man. Baker, Baker Street, my all time favorite yeah. song. And wait a minute, let's not be disrespectful and not mention Al Stewart year of the cat year of the cats. Oh man. Haunting. It's one of those songs. When that, when that song comes on, I go, I go, Shh. everybody be quiet, please. Everybody be quiet. Al Stewart's <laughs> talking about the cat. It's the year of the cat. <laughs> hey, what man, about America? You... you sound like a guy that, that will listen to venture I highway. Think... The desert on a horse with no name. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Out of the, the rain. rain in the, the desert. desert, you can't remember, remember your name. name. But oh, already knew. No, uh, come on. Da, la, da, 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 da. I got to tell you something. When I had yeah. my interview set up with Ricky Smiley this morning, I was not thinking we were going to be singing America. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Listen, man, I I, I love my soft rock. I, I'm yeah. talking about ops. My playlist is nasty. Yeah, yeah. And you got the you got the Sirius XM, you put it on the bridge? N the bridge get too whiny, but I do listen to Yacht Rock Radio. Okay, okay. You ever hear Yacht Rock? Yeah, I love Yacht Rock. I like me some Steely Dan. Yeah. They call Alabama the, the Crimson, Crimson Tide. Tide. Call Don't me Deacon Blue. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, with you. I'm with you on that music now. <laughs> but you don't talk about any of this on your radio show, right? Hey, because that's not my audience, man. Yeah. But I, I will pull one out uh, at karaoke every now and then. Yeah, but right. Yeah, man, going across that, uh, listening to uh, Stevie Nicks. I love Stevie Nicks, man. Um, uh, you know, you know, when, when you're uh, in the no wake zone, your boat going slow. But when I get out on the ocean, I take off. Yeah. I play digga, 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 just like the one in the <laughs> song. I say, ooh, baby, ooh. <laughs> man. <laughs> Everybody and I 
turn all hey, I turn all of my folks. I have everybody. Everybody is added to their playlist. Like when I when everybody will be out on the boat and I'm yeah. playing my 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 classic rock. All right. Man, loved it. Yeah, and I was so happy when Stevie Nicks when that that video went viral and that guy skateboarding to work playing the Stevie Nicks yeah. song, and yeah. and all of a sudden, man, that song went to number one on iTunes and it stayed there for like three weeks. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and see them live in concert all back together again. Yeah, sold out in Atlanta on a Monday night. It was absolutely amazing. That was my first time seeing Fleetwood Mac in concert uh, with Christian B yeah. coming out. Saying, you make loving fun. Yeah, man. And be like, how you know all these songs? I'm like, man, my mom <laughs> smoked with me, man. <laughs> oh, the Eagles. Let's not be disrespectful. The Eagles. Yeah, I get. I have a love hate relationship with the Eagles because I'm from New York and New Yorkers yeah. traditionally hate California rock. We're supposed to hate Jackson Brown and the Eagles. I, I, it was always my guilty pleasure. I never let my friends know that I was listening right. to take it easy. Yeah, man. Take it easy. I was their first hit. That was the take first it. big hit. And, and what was the other one? Uh, not Baker street. The, uh, oh, hotel California. Uh, yeah, that one I like that one, but not by the Eagles, but uh, something Highway, something Highway, Ventura Highway by America. Highway. Sing that. Yeah. That's America. Oh, Ventura Highway we, in, in the, the sunshine, sunshine. with the yeah. days are longer and nights are stronger, stronger than moon. moon. Yes, sir. All day. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, all right, before man. I let you go, before I let you go, because I, I, I know you're a busy man, but there's some things that I ask all my comedian guests, yeah. certain questions I want to know, because usually there's a good story underneath it. Have you uh, ever not finished a set on stage doing stand up? Yeah. Getting crazy fight break out in the audience, uh, or getting booed or audience. Did you get rap. booed off? You got booed off the stage? Oh yeah, at, at at the beginning of my career, like I had a rowdy audience that, that I would have been funny. Yeah. If the audience, okay. And then um uh, I walked on stage a couple of times and said, Hey, I just want y'all to know I was I'm here, but I haven't been paid. If you don't see me, go back and ask for a refund. Good night. <laughs> no shit. So you won't you won't say that I, I didn't show up. Yeah. I'm here. Right. My, microphone check. Hey, I'm here. Yeah. I Hey, I don't right. work for free. Right. I don't come out in 10 minutes. Go ask for a refund. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, and then uh, the last thing I'll ask you is, what's the hackiest bit you ever did? The hackiest, like, uh, what you mean, like? Like corniest, like the joke, a joke that you look back on and you kind of cringe. Like, I can't believe I did that joke. Let's see. Um, little Daryl, but but it, it made me famous. Oh, uh, really? I, I, I don't do it anymore. Uh huh. Because everybody's so sensitive now. You can't make fun of uh, special needs. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, comedy doesn't always age well. I mean, you listen to Eddie Murphy raw, and, and the amount of time he says the, 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 the F word, and, you know, it doesn't age well. So you got to be careful. I'm lucky. I didn't put out a lot of specials. I put out three, and uh, there's, there's one bit. I do a bit called Guess the Asian, and it was on Comedy Central, and it was on Netflix. Oh. And I oh, literally God. went into the audience, and I had a Asian women stand up, and I guessed their ethnicity. You can't what? do that today. You can't do that no, today. You can't, you can't even say spazzed out anymore. Right. Like the chick was spazzing out, like. Right. But I found that out. I found that out last night. Cause I taped the episode of Wild and Out with Nick Cannon. Oh, you did? Yeah, that was fun. I did really well, so I'm looking forward. I hope they call. I think they're gonna call me back. I hope so. I'm excited about it. That's amazing. And I know you also did. Uh, uh, didn't you do a, a movie that he did? Miracles Across 125th. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did Friday After Next. Remember that movie Ice Cube and Mike Gibbs? Yeah, I didn't see the second one. I saw the original one about 10 times. Yeah. 
Yeah, you need to see the third one, the Christmas version. Okay. That's the funniest one. It, really? It's, it's big production is busy. It moves out to Santa Claus in that movie uh -huh. that, they, that they were chasing. I did uh, First Sunday in the movie with Paula Patton, Baggage Claim. Okay. So I've, I've been in some, some films. I had a, a sitcom, made some appearances on Meet the Browns with Tyler Perry. Right. Uh, are we there yet with Ice Cube? So I've done some little stuff, uh, but I don't do a lot of TV shows and movies because I don't like sitting in a trailer all day. I, I can't. No, it's funny. Everybody wants to be an actor until you get a job, and then you go like, "Why? Why, why do I have to be there for a week? I'm doing two scenes, you know." And right. you, you get, yeah, you get, you get to know your cell phone pretty well when you're when you're acting. You do. Yeah, but yeah, you do. But yeah, man, I'm, man, thank you so much for having me, man, and. Man, y'all hit, hit, hit me up on IG, man. My Instagram, I, I post funny stuff. Yeah. On my um, on my Instagram, Ricky Smiley official. All right, I'm gonna um, hit you up, and then I'm gonna I'll hit you up when I'm in Chicago, and maybe we can uh, meet up. Maybe I'll come down and see your show. Okay, come on down. We would love to have you. All right, man. It's great meeting you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, man. Have a blessed one. All right, take care. Peace.